Good morning. Welcome along. Um, another session of Monty's Magical Movements for you this morning. It's Friday the 21st of August 2020. We're coming around to 11am and this is our opportunity to focus onto movements of everyday life and to really focus on uh, them, how the body moves, which are our supporting parts and which are our moving parts, how the body works in interaction, a relaxing class to um, help us to unwind as well. Focusing on balance and strength, but without having to lift weights. So we're working on our inner strength, providing our own resistance, and working on our balance as well to ensure that we stay steady and stable. Now this week, uh, I did say that I would do it last week, and we have some more chair activity for you today as well. So if you prefer to do things in a chair, then there is an option there for you as well. Ideally, we'd like to work towards standing because that's how we really challenge our balance. But this isn't the case for everybody. Not everybody can um, always be in a standing position and may prefer to do some stuff in a seated position. So the option is there for you. As always, make sure you've got some um, fluid available. So make sure you've got some water to stay hydrated. I know it's a bit cooler today than it was uh, last week. Um, but it's still important that we keep our body hydrated, it's an important part of our, our body. Okay, so as always we're going to start with a bit of a warm-up firstly, just to loosen the joints, warm the muscles and get ourselves ready for our uh, activity. First thing we need to focus on is our posture. So in our standing position we're going to look at our posture. Our heels are in line with our knees. The knees stay soft and this is really important. Don't let your knees lock out, okay? So knees are soft, we're not bending them any further. So can you see the difference? This is me bending my knees, this is my knees soft, this is locked. Can you see how the legs subtly change? So there's no real bend there, but we do have that softness within our knees. Hips, from here to your ribs, grow a little bit taller. So stand tall, lift the body, but don't just lift the shoulders, lift the whole body. And feel yourself gaining a couple of inches between your ribs and your hips. Our shoulders come up, back, Shoulder blades together and we press them down, standing in a tall, strong position. Lengthen through your neck so you're standing really tall. If you imagine a piece of string pulling you tall from your head, this is the ideal situation for us. Now, in a seated position, if you, oh, the chair making a lot of noise there. If you are in a seated position, the first thing I want you to do is come from the back of the chair to the front third. So have a little hip walk to the front third of the chair. Yeah? From there, feet flat on the floor, knees in line with our hips, buttocks lift up onto them, so uh, squeeze the buttocks a little bit to lift a little bit taller, and again, grow these extra couple of inches between your ribs and your hips. Shoulders come up, we bring them together, we press them down, and lengthen through our neck. This is our tall posture that we want to start with. From there, let's start with a heel lift. So we're gonna lift the heels off the floor, peeling the heel off, peeling the ball of the foot off, and coming up onto the toes. In our standing position, exactly the same. And if you do in standing position want to have some, have some fixed external support next to you, can you see that lift of the toe? Just shifting the weight from foot to foot, lifting the heel off the floor, coming onto the balls of the feet, and then onto our toes. Now, let's put a little arm swing in there. Controlled, it's not a big move. But what we want to focus on is this shoulder movement here. Yeah? So can you see how we're mobilising through that shoulder joint? Driving the elbow backwards and focusing on some mobilisation through our shoulder. Now, if you're in a standing position and you feel stable, let's put both arms in. And in your seated position, both arms in as well. Just starting to mobilise warm the body. What we're trying to do is open those arteries, get the blood pumping around the body, get the blood to the muscles where we need it, warm the joints, warm the muscles, get some fluidity into our movements. Always controlled movements, it's not a fast move, and the pace that you do is exactly the right pace. So think about where you are, if you're a bit slower than this, then that's fine, but don't make it too fast. Okay, from there, let's take the feet a little bit wider and let's focus into some mobilisation. So with our shoulders firstly, lift your shoulders towards your ears, 
then press them back down. Now make sure your neck stays long. So if I come in close, you can see, I'm not bringing the ears down. Just use that bit of light there. I'm not bringing the ears down to the shoulders. We're staying long in the neck and we're lifting and we're lowering down. Just three, four or five of those is all we really need. And if you feel you have less mobility on one side, then you may want to have a little focus, a couple of extra onto that side where you feel there's a little less range of motion. Taking a pause there, let's bring it into a rotation. So the shoulders come forward first. We lift them towards our ears, roll them back, bring the shoulder blades together and press down. Exactly the same in our seated position. Now as you're doing this, feel that whole joint mobilizing. Feel as you take it round, the whole of the shoulder joint coming into action. Control that motion for me. Remember, it's not a big move, it's not about speed, it's about the quality of the movement. And take a pause there. Now, this next one may challenge your balance a little. So we're gonna take a wider stance. Our feet are outside our hips now, level with our shoulders. And if we want to use our support, feel free. We turn the head to the side. Back to the centre with a pause, and then across towards the other side. Try to focus on keeping the shoulders level and no movement through the shoulders at all. Turning your head can challenge your palate, so if you want to utilise your support, and sometimes it may just be, mean that you need a fingertip onto a wall or onto a piece of furniture to give you that balance. Sometimes our body, just knowing where we are, in relation to our surroundings, helps us to balance. Three, four or five of those on each side. And then take a pause. Okay, into our head. If you feel the back of your head, there's a little bump just at the top of your spine when your neck comes in. Have a look at this move. I'm gonna keep the eye line level. Place my fingers onto my chin and press back. Creating that double chin or our lockdown chin, as I've tried to call it. And we can either keep the fingers on, or we can leave the fingers where they are and bring the head back. Again, the eye line stays level. We're restacking down the vertebrae, through our neck, into our upper spine. Three, four or five of those should do you. And then from there, bring the feet, still shoulder width, and let's have a little sway side to side, just starting to shift that balance from side to side. But at the same time, bring an arm across and back. Do a couple on each side just to give our little reboost back into our circulation and then change to your other arm to bring that arm in there. Okay, I want to come down into your trunk area now so we can really focus into our trunk. We utilize this area continually through the day turning to pick things up, putting our seat belts on, looking over our shoulders, coats on, that sort of thing. So into here, a wider stance. Hips stay still this time, so we're keeping the hips locked. So rotation to the side, come into the center with a little pause, and then across to the other side. Now, if you feel your hips moving, a couple of things you can do here. Place your bottom against the wall or against a work surface, there's your turn. Or alternatively, come down into your chair. Now if you feel your bottom moving against that work surface, we know that we've got some movement into our hips. Now from a standing to a seated position, feel the chair behind you, lower with control into that chair. Don't let yourself plop down, and then take a little hip walk into the front third of the chair. From here, again, we have that movement. To the side, to the center with the pause, and then to the other side. And again here, if you feel your bottom lifting off that chair, then you know you've got some movement into the hips. And you really want to focus into our trunk, utilizing that area. Not only do we use it every day as far as lifting and picking things, but it plays an essential part in our balance. Throughout our day as we're walking, going about our everyday activities, the trunk is making minor adjustments within the core to enable us to stay balanced. Once you've done three, four or five of those on either side, take a little pause, 
and then let's come into a side bend. Down to the side and back up. Down to the side and back up with a little pause. Now again, we've got that wide stance. So heels are outside. If you want to utilize support, then do. Come into the support. Do a few on one side and then change to the other side. In our chair, then we can utilize the legs of the chair as a reference point to come down, up, a little reset in the center, and down again. Focusing into trying to increase our range of motion down through the side of our body. And as you come down, you can feel a lengthening here. You can feel some work going on here. And again, these are things that we use every day, reaching down to pick things up. Once you've done three, four or five of those on either side, take a little pause for me. One last one for you to mobilize into our back. So, eye line is going to stay level. Hips and pelvis are going to stay still. This time, so we're not going to tip forward and we're not going to tip backwards. We're going to try and keep that still. The back comes back and the eye line stays level. So, can you see how we're extending into the back? If I pull my t shirt in a little bit, can you see that movement there? Eye line staying still. Now, again, you can use a work surface or something. If you bring this into a seated position, you'll probably see this movement a little bit clearer. Again, Eye line still, so we're creating that chin again. Can you see that movement? And you should feel this into your lower back. Once you've done that, come back in, take your feet wide, and let's come back into that sway with those hands across. Now as you bring those hands across, face the palm to the floor one way, and then to the ceiling the other. Now, it doesn't really matter. Here I'm placing the palm towards the floor as I come across the body, towards the arm that's still, and then towards the ceiling as I sweep it back the other way. The shift of weight is not allowing my knees to go outside of my stance, so they go no further out than the side of my shoe. So we stay within our base of support. Change sides, okay? So again, just re circulation boosting there excellent okay from there come back in we're going to move on to our first movement to challenge our balance so from here what i want you to do is take one foot slightly in front of the other so we've got a staggered stance can you see shift the weight so we've got it across both feet to start off with focus on your posture stand tall that's our foot placement in our chair going to do is take one foot slightly forward the other. We're not going to be able to get as big a stance as we did in a standing position, but you've got that split still, okay? And this will foster the movement to allow us to go to a standing position once that is on our radar. Okay, so our movement with our feet is just to shift the weight to the front and then shift the weight onto the back leg. Now we start off ideally with weight 50-50 across our legs most of the time. Maybe we might have a problem as far as our legs are concerned. We may have a knee problem or anything, which means that we don't have that 50-50 split to start off with. But going forward, we try and focus on getting that even split. And here, we're moving towards an 80-20 type split. So as I shift my weight forward, the bulk of my weight comes into the front foot. It still stays flat on the floor. The back leg stays flat on the floor. And then as I shift the weight the other way, the front leg stays down and the weight comes onto the back leg. Exactly the same in our seated position. What you're going to do for me, if you turn sideways again, look, is a hinge from the hip. So the important part here is that the back is staying straight. The movement is happening from our hip, not from our waist. So we haven't got a bend like this. We've lengthened through the back still and we're just shifting that weight forward and backwards, and you will feel the difference into your buttocks. So as you shift forward, you'll feel the weight come onto the top of your thighs, and as you come back, you'll feel that weight come onto your bottom. Now you can take it a little bit further back in the starting position, so you get that real shift of weight happening. Excellent. Take a pause there for a moment, and let's have a look at our hands. Now, I want you to have your hands, and imagine that you're holding two eggs. They haven't been hard-boiled or anything. They're two 
raw eggs in their shell. So we need to hold them really carefully in our hands, yeah, between our fingers. And our movement is going to be this. We're going to take them forward and then pull them back in. Coming forward and up, down and back in. That's our motion. Yeah? Slow and controlled. Alright? In our seated position, exactly the same. Now, let's try and put the two together. So we've got our feet. Let's shift the weight forward and back. Feeling that change of weight. Focus on this posture still. So still standing or sitting tall. Just shifting the weight forward and back. Have your eggs ready in your hand. And as you come forward, take the hands forward. Bring them down and pull them back. Okay? There is your first part of this movement. Exactly the same in our seated position. If I come sideways for you, look, here it is. Bring out and down. Now, if you imagine rowing, and this is your oar, the eggs are the oar which you're holding very lightly. Coming out and pulling back with that motion. Okay, so we've got that fluid motion. Here, we're feeling this into our hips with this sway of movement forward and back. We're controlling it through our trunk. So those mobilizations we did earlier on as far as our trunk is concerned. We're pulling the belly button in towards the base of the spine. And that's helping as far as our balance is concerned. This movement here, firstly we've got control as far as our hands is concerned and then as we come forward and back we've got a mobilization through our shoulders and because we're coming up and then back down as we come in we've got that range of motion so think about we did it backwards last time but it's exactly the same move forwards isn't it look it's that motion there okay move number one now let's move on a stage further so what we're going to do so we're going to alternate the arms this time. So have a quick look and see what you feel about it. So we're going to imagine we're on a bit of a paddle steamer this time. Not paddle steamer because the steamer would be doing all the work, wouldn't it? We're on um, a bit of a, a, a two rows, but we're going to do two oars, but we're going to do them not in unison. We're going to do them one at a time. So we've got a bit of a steer of the boat like this. Okay. So I shift forward, take that one forward and back then change sides, okay? So we're shifting the weight forward and back, we're taking one hand out and bringing it back in, holding the oars between your hands. Now, let's try and change it, and it's exactly the same in our seated position, this, but let's try and change it. So as we bring one hand back in, the other hand is coming forward. Now, really focus on this, so that we don't twist through the shoulder. So have a look from the side, and here is your motion. Look. What we want to avoid is any twisting through the chest. So have a quick look. If I start to twist through the chest, we get this movement happening here. Let's avoid that. Let's make the arms do the work as we shift weight forward and backwards. In our seated position, then again, we are here with that movement forward and backwards. Hinging from our hip, keeping the back in perfect alignment or as best alignment as we can achieve. Yeah? We can't all have perfect alignment. We may have a problem there in our back, which means that we can't straighten it totally. But go with what is best for yourself. Think about sitting and standing taller throughout. Lovely. Take a break there, take a pause, have a drink, come back in. And when you come back in, bring yourself back into this swaying motion. But this time, we're going to put both arms in. So both arms are going to come across and back at the same time as we take it out and down. Looking a bit further back. Then there you are. Now in your seated position, take your feet a little bit wider. Again, you've got this motion here. Look, shifting the weight 
from buttock to buttock, taking the arms across and back down. So across and over, changing your hands, palms to face the ceiling and face the floor. Now as we do that, we work through our wrists. Look at the wrist motion there. As you change it, the wrist motion changes. Yeah? The influence through your shoulder changes as well. And you can feel, as you do this, if you resist against it, you can feel your biceps doing some work. You can feel your triceps at the back of the arm and the front of the arm here. As you've got that shift of weight across, and that motion through your wrists, through your shoulders just to give us another little boost of our circulation. Okay, take a pause there. Now last week, we did a move that was about moving clouds. Let's go back to that again. So we'll pick it up from where we left off. We'll start with our feet. And here, we've got feet staggered, but diagonal this time. So we've got this motion across to the front, and then across to the back, but it's more diagonal, can you see? So I'm coming here, and I'm going there rather than just side to side as we were doing previously. And we're not going forward and back as we were doing with the ball motion. Okay, so <clears throat> this movement of our feet forward and back, forward and back. Okay, and exactly the same in our seated position. We take that staggered position, we come forward and we come back. So this time, although we've got a hip hinge again, we're hinging it diagonally. So we're gonna feel one of the buttocks lift off the floor, uh, lift off the, sorry, off the seat, as we come to the front and we take it back, okay? What you may want to do in a seated position is change your legs around every now and again, so that you should change the influence of where that weight is going. All right. So there's our feet. Let's just get them in the stance, but let's not actually put the movement in. One hand comes up in front, level with our head. We turn it away, push, and lower back down. Again, let me come back a little further so you can see the whole movement of those hands. So up in front, turn the hand out and push it away. Bring it back down and in. Up. Push away, back down, and in. Now, let's try and get the two working together. Do you remember? So we bring this hand up, we take it out, and as it starts to come down, the other hand starts to come up. So we've now got this fluid motion happening. Both hands are moving at the same time. Yeah? So there's our controlled motion. Don't be too fast with this movement. And then our last part, we have a head turn in as well. So as the hand goes away, we follow it. And then as it comes back down, we come back into the center. So we're ready to follow our other hand. So as we get to the bottom here, look, we're ready turn the head the other way. So we've continually got this head movement, again, challenging our balance. And in our seated position, exactly the same. We're coming up, we're taking it out. And as it comes down, the head comes back into the centre to follow us the other way. Now, as I said earlier, turning our head can challenge our balance. So if you don't feel comfortable with it, don't do it. Have some support and just do one side at a time. That's an option for you as well. We've got this wider base of support, so we've got a good base of support to work with in there. And the wider our base of support is, the better for us. So if I'm if I'm here and I'm waving my arms out, I've got no real base of support there. My, you can see my centre of gravity is shifting from outside my balance area. The wider stance, I can do these movements, and I'm staying within my area of support. Okay, so let's put the two together. So feet flat on the floor, lifting tall, let's focus on our posture again. We bring one hand up and we shift the weight forward. We follow the hand out, shifting our weight backwards and forwards the whole time. As this hand comes down, the head comes back into the centre. 
and the other hand starts to come up. We follow in ours. We bring it down and head comes back in. So we've got this fluid motion of the head moving from side to side. And all the time, our hands are moving as well. Lots of things to think about. Lots of movement happening here. And the whole idea here is that we're working on our balance. So what's happening is the brain is learning, it's memorizing, as are the muscles, how they need to act when there's a shift of weight. So which muscles are tensing, which muscles are relaxing to enable us to stay balanced and stay moving. And in everyday life, we never work in one dimension. We have lots of activities going on at the same time. So we're continually moving three dimensionally. We don't think about it, but here we've got that ability to focus, to feel our body, to experience how the muscles, how the joints work with each other to enable us to stay tall, to stay steady, and to stay strong. From there, bring those feet back in, take a deep breath in, and out. Lovely job, okay, let's move on. So we're gonna have a look at some balance working. I want to look at our ankle, feet, and toes. So, firstly, from a mobilization point of view, with some support available. Bring your foot in, put your hand, foot on the toe, toes on the floor. And then have a look the first couple of times, lift and put your heel in the same place. Your leg closest to the support is the one that's staying still, knee soft, yeah? Once you've done it a couple of times and you feel confident with it, lift and place. Lift and place. So there, we're working through our ankle joint. Now in our seated position, exactly the same. But this time you need to bring your foot back a little bit so you've got some room to work within. And from there, we lift and place the toes on the floor. We lift and put the heel in the same place. Again, focusing on sitting tall and feel this ankle joint moving. Now an alternative for you here in a seated position is to sit back into the chair. Extend your leg away. Push the toes away, bring the toes in towards the shin. So extend the tendons of toes away, toes in towards the shin and extend the heel away. So again, we've got that motion through our ankle. You may find that a little bit easier. Don't bring your leg too high though, keep it down. What we don't want to be experiencing is a heavy load of work into our thigh or into our calf. Do, do a few on one side, as many as you feel comfortable with, and then change to your other side to, to get some mobilization onto that side as well. Just mobilizing that joint. Now your ankles play a crucial part in our balance. With our roads, with our pavements, they're not always even. We can have slabbed areas, we can have bricked areas, we can have cobbled areas, and all the time, our ankles are having to make little adjustments to keep ourselves balanced. So this movement here, if I'm shifting my weight, the ankle is having to react to that. If we're walking down the street and we change direction, the ankle has to part to play in that, that movement there. So it's really important that we stretch them, mobilize them to ensure that we can get the best out of them. And it helps us stay steady and stable. Okay, from here, let's have a look at working on a bit of a balance. So, what I want you to do, have your support available, and we'll go through this in a seated position as well to, a, to an extent, okay? What I'm going to do is step forward onto my heel. My other foot is on the floor. Have a look at the movement firstly. I'm going to bring the ball of the foot down onto the floor and the toes down onto the floor. And then at the same time as I shift my weight onto the front leg, I'm going to come up onto the toes at the back. And then bring it back down and step back in. On the other leg, I step out. Heel, ball, toes, and at the back, coming off the heel, onto the ball, onto the toes, and then placing it back down. So have a look at the front foot firstly. It goes 
heel, ball, toe. And then as I step back, it goes toe, ball, heel, and then steps back in, ball, heel, toe. Have a look at the back leg this time, look. So I peel off the heel, I peel off the ball, and I come onto my toe. As I come back, toe, ball, heel, and I step back in with that other leg. And this, broken down like this, is a walk. This is the movement we do as we walk. We're shifting our weight and utilizing that ankle, feet, and toes. Now, in our seated position, we need to start with the feet a little bit further back. We can step out, we can put the foot down, and we can hinge from our hip to bring the, the foot up onto the toe slightly. You're only going to be able to achieve a little bit of movement there. And then come back in and step. You're not going to see the movement within the back foot in a seated position. But we can get a little bit of movement into our front foot. And we can really focus on that lift. Now the other thing we can do is if we don't step as far forward, heel down, ball and toe, as we come forward we can get a little bit more of a lift onto our toe. And you'll feel your calf engaging. You'll feel tenseness within your calf as you lift. Okay, so that's just focusing on that movement. And it's a movement, as I say, that we do in everyday life. It is our walk, basically. When we walk, we go through our ankle, feet, and toes. Let's take it into a balance activity then. So from there, with support if you need it, let me show you from the front first. I'm gonna take one foot and I'm gonna place it in line with the other foot. The heel and the toe are close together, but they're not touching. And then I'm gonna shift my weight even across both feet. From the side look, it's here. Okay? So, feet are in line, not quite touching. You might just be able to see that they're not touching. Okay? Focus onto a point in the distance and shift your weight. And you'll feel yourself challenged balance wise. So, have a wall available. Remember, as I said at the beginning, if you feel at all unbalanced, sometimes just having something to place your fingers on is going to let your body know, I know where I am now, as far as the surroundings are concerned, I know where I am, I can do this, I can balance. And that may be enough, you may not have to actually put your hands onto the wall and grab hold for support. Now in our seated position, it's a bit of a staggered stance because it's quite difficult to take that foot right in line. So what you're doing here, look, is the ball of the foot is into the heel or the heel of the foot is into the ball of the other one. And I'll show you this a little bit in a moment know, with my hand. And your movement there is to shift the weight forward and just hold it there. Now, because this doesn't challenge our balance a great deal, what we do is we're going to reach out diagonally towards the front and then come back in. And then shift the weight again and reach out diagonally to the side. Now, so you can see that foot placement. If these are my feet, okay? This is the ball of my foot. This is the heel of my foot, sorry. This is the ball and this is my toes. So that's that one foot. The other foot goes like that. So the heel is just behind the ball of the foot into the bridge of your toes, of your foot, sorry. So where you've got the little bit that comes in where the bridge of your foot is, that's where you're gonna place your, your heel. So there's your bit of a staggered stance and you've got that additional reach, okay? So, choose which one you want to do, bring yourself in, and shift your weight. And just hold it there. Focus onto a point in the distance so you can see and utilize that point as a position to hold. Now, only if you feel ready, if you feel able, what we can then do to challenge our balance a little bit more is add bit of a head turn and you can see even with myself here look it challenges my balance and now my legs are making minor adjustments my core is making minor adjustments to try and keep me balanced that is all I want you to do just focus on that balance and only if you feel ready to put a head turn in and again have your support available so you can place a finger on it if you need it now again in your seated position you have the ability here as you reach out to turn your head as well. 
to add that challenge in. Take a pause there and then change your legs round so we can work on both. We usually have one leg that is stronger than the other. And certainly if you've had anything affect us health-wise or balance-wise, we may find that one leg is stronger than the other. One is more of a dominant leg. So again, with that balance there, with our feet in line, weight shifted even across both feet, we can add that turn of the head in if we feel comfortable with it. Remembering, as always, that we can place our hand onto the wall to anchor. Once you've done that, a few times, come back in, take your feet out, take a deep breath in. And out. And do it again, breathe in. And out. Okay. In a seated position if you feel comfortable with it, bring yourself into a seated position. You can stay standing if you want to. Remember, if you're coming into a seated position from standing, feel the chair behind you, lower with control. And then bring yourself forward into the front third of the chair. Okay? From here, I want you to focus. Try and empty your mind of anything that's in there. Really easy in my case. But try and focus on just yourself and your breathing. Okay? Forget about anything you have to do later on. Take a deep breath in. And out. Now, as you focus on this breathing, bring your hands up in front. As you breathe in, and then push down as you breathe out. Breathe in through your nose. And breathe out through your mouth. If you're in a seated position, you may want to close your eyes to help you just focus onto this breathing. And feel your breath. So as you breathe in, feel your lungs expanding. Feel your chest expanding. As you fill the lungs with air. And as you breathe out through your mouth, feel and hear that air. So Blow it out. Feel your, lung, feel your lungs really filling with that oxygen as you breathe in. And then as you breathe out, try and expel it all out. Taking those nice deep breaths in. And out. Okay. Keep that breathing going, but try not to focus on it anymore. So just let it happen naturally. Taking deep breaths in. And out. In our standing position, let's take our feet a little bit wider, bend our knees slightly and bring ourselves down. And as we breathe in, turn to the side. And as you breathe out, pull back in. So we. Do a few on one side, change to your other. In our seated position, and again, we can do the same look. Sitting tall, turning through, keeping the bottom onto the chair so that you're trying to focus a little into that trunk. Breathing out as you come across, uh, breathing in, sorry, as you come across and out as you take it the other way. And then change to the side. So again. Splay your fingers as you come across and then pull them in and grip. Create a fist as you come back as best you can. Yeah? So it doesn't have to be a tight fist, but just bring your fingers in and work on that mobility within your fingers. Take a pause there for me. Okay. We're both seated and standing. Tall. We take a deep breath in. 
and out, bringing the arms down. Okay, again, breathing in. And out. Feel the body relaxing. Feel all your joints relaxing. And remember, your range of motion is the right motion. So if you can only bring your hands up to level with the shoulders, that's fine. You work within your own capabilities always. Okay, one last time. Big deep breath in. Bring it halfway down. Bring the hands in front towards you. Bring them in towards your chest. And then push away. Release. Hands down. Roll your shoulders. And relax. Well done. There we are. Another session of magical movements for you with some additional chair movements in there as well. So this can be done both in seated and standing. It's always an option for you. Work within your own capabilities. If you want to go back and have a look at this again, feel free to do so. If you're joining it on catch up, then pause, have a look at the movement, have a practice of it. I'll be here with you again next week and we'll do some more magical movements for you. Remember, it's all about everyday life. It's about movements that we do in our everyday life, but experiencing how they feel, how the body works, how another muscle works with an alternative muscle, how the joints work. So we can really focus on that and try and focus on our posture. Also at the same time, through our breathing, giving ourselves some inner peace, some inner relaxation. Have a great week everybody. Please do leave some comments and leave us some feedback. Let me know if there's anything in particular you would like to include in there. Um, we included some more chair activity for you this week, but it's always good to have your feedback. So please do let us know what you thought of it. Let us know your feedback and I will see you next Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.